yes, we'll continue with the chapter. So now we'll see about the law of segregation, right? And then we'll talk about codominance. What is codominance and what are these lethal genes? All right. So first we'll move on to law of segregation. Law of segregation. So what do we what do we mean by segregation? Why are you segregating something? Which means that you are isolating something. You are taking something apart. So that is called as segregation. As in mono hybrid cross, there is no segregation. Everything was a blending of the character, right? It was a tall parent, a dwarf plant parent. The offspring would carry the gene of both the parent, but it will exhibit the um, home, uh, the dominant uh, superior trait but in case of this there is no exhibiting of superior trait or inferior trait there is an exhibiting of a new different fantastic trait okay so that is called as this law of segregation and this I am taking example as snapdragon flowers even there is uh, an example of this 4 o'clock plant uh, Mirapolis Jalapa if you take the state book, state board book there will be an example of that also and there is like n number of examples so many examples which you can note under this segregation but now we will see this snapdragon flowers alone now they have taken red color snapdragon flowers and white color snapdragon flowers right now what is happening when you fuse this red color flowers and the white color flowers there is red is the dominant character and white is the recessive character right now this dominant character has to be exhibited right but no now in this uh, law of segregation this dominant character is not been exhibited rather a new character has been exhibited so that is the uh, quality of this law of segregation now red color in the f1 generation red plant is also not exhibited white plant is also not exhibited what happened when you mix this white uh, paint with red color paint there will be this pink color paint right pink color which is often the same way when they fuse this red color flower with the pink color flower everything was what everything was this pink color flowers and now again when you do the selfing with two pink color flowers so there are different types of combination it could be either red it could be pink or white so now as in in mono hybrid cross there was the phenotypic ratio and the genotypic ratio was different it was 3 is to 1 and 1 is to 2 is to 1 but in case of this there is a similar phenotypic as well as a genotypic ratio which is 1 is to 2 is to 1 and 1 is to 2 is to 1 so that is the speciality of this law of segregation very simple is where there is no blending there is a distinct character which has been observed so that is law of segregation next we'll move on to the score dominance so it is a totally opposite thing of this law of segregation Co-dominance is nothing but both of the gene play a very important role in determining the character of an individual. So for example when you see, um, okay a primitive example is that human blood group. Now what happens is that humans have blood and this blood has these red blood corpuscles right RBCs and now the outer membrane of these RBCs you call it as the plasma membrane and this plasma membrane will have genes which will encode for this blood groups okay so basically you have capital I the capital I of the alphabet right so the capital I gene which will code for the A blood group and the B blood group but the small I which will code for O blood group to be even more precise capital I gene will have they produce sugar polymers whereas this small I will not produce sugar polymers so now we'll imagine this parent 1 and parent 2 and then the genotype and the Phenotype. Now you can imagine one as the mother and the other as father. Okay. So I'll tell you one example and the rest everything is much easier. Now I gene with blood group A which is coding the sugar polymer A and A. A A which means that the genotype is obviously I A and I A and the blood group would be 
A. Okay. Now, whatever I say, it is not the exact hundred percent because we are seeing only the genetic part of it. We have not yet moved to the immunologic part of it, where there is antigen and antibody interaction mechanism. So now, don't think that my mom is A, my dad is also A, but I am O blood group. How is it possible? Everything is possible. Fifty percent chance, and all that. When I move on to this immunology chapter, I will teach you in a clearly clear manner. For time's sake, now this. you can imagine only about the sugar polymer and the gene right so now in the same way when you take this i a and i b there is a blood group and b blood group a b blood group now next the same way when you take i b and i this small i does not have any sugar polymer so basically you just have it they are all o blood group type so b And O is just B. Why? Because anything which is exhibiting the sugar polymer will be enhanced more. Anything which is not exhibiting the sugar polymer will not be enhanced. But only exception in case of O blood group. Small I, small I. There's no other O. There are just O genotypes. So the blood group will be O. All right. So that is the concept with this co-dominance. Next, we'll move on to lethal genes. Lethal genes. Are the genes which cause death in individuals? Okay, this also we are taking this nab dragon as an example. And now what happens? Anterior aurea, right? Now aurea is a very pale green color. So in this anterior aurea, we'll discuss about three genes. Now when this capital C and capital C, this will encode for plants with chlorophyll. right and now the small c in small c is where the plants which does not have chlorophyll eventually they do not exist because the lethal gene is small c and small c whereas when it comes in hybrids capital c and small c it is a pale green color and that is what is this snap dragon anterior aurea flowers right now what happens one person this one part of this community they die because of this lethal gene because now you imagine this anterior aurea has one capital c gene and small c gene when this small c gene is in pairs they do not produce chlorophyll and eventually it results in the death of a plant right so imagine one anterior aurea plant with the other anterior aurea plant right capital c capital c so this is a plant which produce chlorophyll healthy plant now capital c and small c they are all the bit between hybrids which is aurea and color which means which has pale green in color which undergo photosynthesis but this small c and small c this percentage genotypically and phenotypically it is lethal why because there is no gene only capital gene will encode for the photosynthesis right now the small c gene is not encoding for photosynthesis now there is no photosynthesis occurring in the plant and eventually there is no food processing in plant and the plant dies right so now we spoke about law of segregation codominance and lethal genes so next we will continue with the last session now this is the last important session so that also we will see if you want to take a screenshot you're welcome hello friends so yeah we are uh, towards the end of the chapter but but still we are going to discuss about many important parts of the chapter so in that is a very famous dye hybrid cross and this dye hybrid cross is a small twist that i'm going to explain only half and the other half you're going to comment in the comment section right so what is dye hybrid cross it is nothing but the two genes are been inherited okay that is called as dye dye two genes right so two genes are been inherited that is why it is called as dye hybrid cross so first we'll talk about the genes encoding for different characters round seeds wrinkled seeds yellow color seeds and green color seeds so these are all the genes now what mendel has taken is that he has taken a round yellow color plant right plant meaning which has a round color seed right so which is a round color round yellow color seeds and this is what green color seeds but it's a wrinkled seed because uh, in the introduction chapter i told you about the seven pairs of contrasting traits is that so that is about all this if you don't understand this 
this will be very important okay so first is what round yellow color and the gene so anything which has been in a pair you have to write it only once so capital r capital y small r small y right and now the f1 hybrid is this right now in case of mono hybrid cross what did you do you wrote it just like that in the punar checker board only once but in case of di hybrid cross there is two genes governing a particular trait right so what do you do it you write it this capital r small r will encode for round color capital y small y will encode for what yellow color right so now this is how you have to write in the punar checker board because not two it is like four pairs of contrasting characters now because round yellow round green yellow wrinkled yellow round so it will be like that so capital r capital y capital r small y small r capital y small r and small y and now if you write this in a punnett checker board so you will get a, a square right in that the phenotypic ratio will be 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1 but the genotypic ratio will be a very lengthy genotypic ratio and now if you had understood my codominance monohybrid cross and all that this you will answer it correctly because how can i check whether you have understood the concept only through this i know what is the genotypic and phenotypic ratio let's see whether you are finding the genotypic and phenotypic ratio so you comment in the comment section and i will check whether it is right or not so we are done with this dihybrid cross next is polygenic inheritance so this is little new i will teach you it is very simple polygenic is where many genes will go govern a particular uh, trait or a character for example the kernel of wheat plants right so wheat plant which has its own kernel right so there is a contrast of these character which is in gradient colors right so it could be a dark red light red pale red and even more paler baby red color and then you have white white lay you have what different types of white right the gradients of white so all this is decided by many genes as in how you, it is uh, many genes are governing the human skin color right so i told you in the introductory chapter the polygenic the discontinuous variation so that is exactly the polygenic inheritance now you see these are all the dominant gene governing for dark red now when there is any slight variation of a recessive gene it is little more bit lower and now everything is recessive it is white color it's so simple that you have uh, five cups of milk and you add different gradients of decoctions to it for example the first cup you add one drop two drops three drops four drops and you see the color gradation and that's how exactly there is many type of gene as in how the decoction intensity is uh, judging the color of the tea right it's so simple like how different variations of the gene is judging the gradients of the color of wheat kernel so that is all about and then these two mitochondrial inheritance and chloroplasmic inheritance so all this will come under ex extra chromosomal or extra nuclear inheritance which means that the gene alone does not play a very important role in government the trait of an individual along with this mitochondria and chloroplast which has its own gene will also determine these contrasting traits in an individual so first they have taken a male plant with dark green leaves then they have taken a female plant with dark green leaves but now what is happening in f1 there is a plant with dark green leaves now you cannot judge whether it has got from its father or mother because both have a similar pair of trait and thus the offspring also have a similar pair of trait but now when you take the dark green male and a light green female light green female plant only is exhibited as an offspring why because it is all written in the uh, cytoplasm right now this cytoplasm which is a maternal cytoplasm which is being exhibited more so that is what they are trying to tell right next we move on to the mitochondrial inheritance now you have a normal cytoplasm and then an abnormal cytoplasm so male with a normal cytoplasm 
this you take with pollen and ovary that is why they are trying to tell male with a normal cytoplasm and a female with an abnormal cytoplasm and the offspring will also be a sterile male why because this is judged in the previous generation this female would have mated or would have fertilized with an abnormal male and this female has ended up having an abnormal cytoplasm right would have uh, like fused with a male with abnormal cytoplasm hence the female is having an abnormal cytoplasm now this female with abnormal cytoplasm when it is fused with a male with a normal always it is maternal in case of this mitochondrial inheritance now it will lead with a male which has a sterile right so that is the concept and then the last concept is atavism so atavism is the sudden throwback or the throwback of ancestral character so for example in humans chimps chimps and the monkeys which have a tail right so this is something where to denote our ancestral significance we have this atavism sudden throwback of ancestral character it is not only in case of like a huge difference between chimps monkeys and humans but also uh, like three to four or five generations when you go behind and you when you compare with the ancestor you have a similar type of character so that is called as atavism sudden throwback suddenly there is a girl she would exactly resemble like her grand great 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 grand mom what like so many years ago so many generations ago some 10 to 20 generations ago she would resemble like her because that is a sudden throwback of the character so that to be even more precise that is what is atavism throwback of ancestral character so next class i will start with a new chapter hope you would understand it understood it so if you have any doubts you can comment in the comment box below thank you